hey, future respiratory therapist. So I got an email recently and there was a couple of pictures attached and the pictures had a question on the pictures. It looked like it was from some sort of practice TMC exam. And I responded to the email, but it's such a good question that I want to expose it to all of you so you can be prepared for this question when you take your TMC exam, if you see a question like this, okay? So the the, the question, I don't have enough room to put all of it on the board, but I, I, I'm just going to lay it out for you, okay? So the question basically basically talks about you have a patient paralyzed being ventilated in volume control AC, Okay, so that's where we are. And then they give you the vent settings and they give you an ABG. Now let's look at the info we have. So up here at the top here, we have all the info that we were given. So on an AC, a rate of 10, remember the patient's paralyzed, so they're not gonna be breathing above. Tidal volume 600 mLs and an FiO2 of 40. Our ABG was 7.29, CO2 of 15 and O2 of 77. Now right off the bat, when you're reading this question, you should think immediately, okay, this, is causing this, the high CO2 is causing the acidotic pH. They also gave a bicarb, it was 27 with a base excess of plus three, not important. That's that's distracting information from you at this point, okay? Just like the FO2 up here at 40, that's a distractor. So you gotta be able to, to recognize all the information they give you, which is gonna be a lot. What's a distractor and and what's important to this scenario into this question, okay? So as I'm reading this question, I see a CO2 of 50 and an acidotic pH, and I go, okay, they're probably gonna ask, how do we fix this CO2? And sure enough, when we look at the question, here's what it is. Which of the following vent settings, I abbreviated it, which of the following vent settings will decrease the CO2 to 40? And they give you these four options. Do you wanna go 712, 915, 808, or 750 and 10, okay? Now, if you see this and you're thinking to yourself, hey, I want to practice this, then pause this video right now. Work through it, okay, and then come back and see which one of these you choose and we'll see if it's the right one. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and get into how we dissect this problem. Now, you remember you learned a formula called the desired CO2 formula. You learned how to manipulate rate, tidal volume, and minute ventilation how to how to change those to achieve a desired co2 using the information you already have and that's exactly what this question is asking now if you only remember one of those you're going to find yourself in trouble okay so for example let me do it like this if we go desired co2 and we want to see what we want to change our respiratory rate to okay so this is our desired respiratory rate and then the formula says desired respiratory rate equals known respiratory rate times known CO2 divided by desired CO2. Okay, that's the formula. So when we take this and we, we perform this, what you're going to find is this. You're going to put uh, your desired respiratory rate is going to equal our known respiratory rate is 10. Our known CO2 is 50, and our desired CO2, the question tells us, is 40, okay? So you're going to put that down here at the bottom. Now, when you do the math, you're going to get respiratory rate equals, this equals 500, so it's 500 divided by 40, excuse me, 500 divided by 40 gives us a desired respiratory rate of 12 and a half. Now what this is saying is, is that if we increase our respiratory rate from 10 to 12 and a half, then it'll equal a CO2 of 40, okay? And this is assuming that we're keeping a tidal volume of 600, okay? That's important when you look at this question and here's why. You come over here and say, oh, I gotta increase my rate to 1250. Well look, I mean 12.5, well look, 12.5 is not an option. So what are you gonna go with? Oh, they must want me to choose this one, right? Because it's 12, you can't set 12 and a half, so this is, must be the one they want me to choose. The problem is you have to remember this, the 12.5 is assuming that we keep the 600. Well, this tidal volume has changed to 700. 
So that that can't that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for 612.5, not an option. So this formula, while done correctly, is not the formula you need to answer this question. Now the other way, the other clue that it wasn't going to be the respiratory rate, you're not going to solve your desired CO2 to get a new respiratory rate is because when you look back at the options, none of them are keeping our tidal volume at 600. So that right there tells you this formula isn't going to give you the answer. Okay, so we got to do a different formula. So I'm going to erase this. I'm just going to erase just this part of this and just this part of this. Okay, now let's go with desired tidal volume because remember you can do the same thing by choosing and solving this for tidal volume. You just put your known tidal volume here and then do the same formula. So here we have new tidal volume equals 600 times 50 divided by 40. Now when we do that, we do 600 times 50 equals 30,000 divided by 40 equals a tidal volume of 750. Now remember this 750 says if you keep the rate at 10 and increase the tidal volume to 750, then you will get a CO2 of 40. Now we know our answer right now. Okay, I'm going to take this a step further and show you another way you can perform this 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 solve this problem if the qu answers were slightly different okay but for what we have now we see we come over here do we have a tidal volume option of 750 yes right here and does our rate stay at 10 yes this is going to be the correct answer is going to be d okay so if you solve this and you got d then congratulations so this is our correct answer okay now here's what happens sometimes you're thinking to yourself Man, nobody puts a tidal volume of 750 on the patient, okay? So this is a test-taking skill, or a test-taking tip, if you will. The question didn't give us information about the size of the patient, the height of the patient, the ideal body weight of the patient. They didn't tell us if it was a male or a female. It told us nothing about the patient. All it said was patient on a vent, paralyzed, VCAC, Here's your settings, here's your gas, what would you change to get a CO2 of 40? If they don't tell you anything about the size of the patient, then you have to eliminate this idea that you see in clinic. That's the biggest thing. Don't think about clinic when you're taking these exams. Because you would probably be shy to pick this answer. If you had no idea what you were doing, you'd probably pick A because you'd go, well, all these tidal volumes are clearly too high. Even 700 is arguably high in today's world of mechanical ventilation for most patients. But this is the lowest tidal volume to be safe, so I'm going to go with A. But that's not, they don't give you anything about the patient. So if they don't give you a size, a height, an ideal body weight, or anything about the patient, then don't be afraid to pick a tidal volume that might seem too high if it gives you the answer to what they're asking, which in this case it does. Tidal volume is 750 with the rate of staying at 10 will give us a CO2 of 40, and that's the correct answer, okay? Now, the other way to do this, this question is by not doing rate or tidal volume. And this is actually the way I prefer to do it, but you guys know I'm a minute ventilation guru. Like, that's my thing. It's the number one most important formula that, that I tend to press upon my students to understand that it's not respiratory rate and it's not tidal volume that changes CO2, it's minute ventilation. So you can come in here and you can make these few changes right here, okay? And you just say desired minute ventilation and then put in known minute ventilation there. Now to do this, to set this up, you have to say, okay, I'm going to get a new minute ventilation. So this is going to equal my known minute ventilation, which we know we have a rate of 10 and a tidal volume of 600. This gives us, if we multiply those together, 10 times 6 gives us 6,000 mLs, which is the same as 6 liters. So we got a minute ventilation of 6. Our known CO2 is 50. Our desired is 40. Now we do this math. We're going to get 6 times 50 is, is, is 300 divided by 40 
is going to give us 7.5 liters. Okay, now step over here and find the set of options that gives you a minute ventilation of 7.5. Okay, so if we look at this, we got 7 times 12 equals a minute ventilation of 8.4. That's too high. We have, what do we got? 900. 0.9 times 15 gives us a minute ventilation of 13.5. That's too high. We have 0.8 times 8 is 6.4. That's too low. And then we look 750 times 10, we get 7.5. And that's our answer. Okay? And that's another way you can do this formula if tidal volume doesn't give you the right answer. So respiratory rate's not the answer. You do, you do the respiratory rate formula, you, that's, crap, that's not what they're looking for. Do the tidal volume, crap, there's no, there's no, where the rate doesn't stay the same. Okay, so right here stays the same, so maybe it's 750. All these have different rates and different tidal volumes, so you have to use minute ventilation to know where you're coming from. Now I'm gonna change this up just a, just a hair, okay? What if the question would have had something like this? Five hundred and a rate of fifteen. Okay, so now if you remember when we did, let me get this off the board here. When we did our respiratory rate and we solved it, we need, we we said we needed twelve and a half breaths per minute to get us to forty. Well. There's no 12 and a half, so it can't be respiratory rate. When we did tidal volume, we saw that we needed a tidal volume of 750 to get us to a CO2 of 40. Well, let's look. No, 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 no. So I can't use this either. This one doesn't help us either. But when we look at the minute ventilation, you will find that, remember, we had 8.4, 13.5, 6.4, and if you do 500 times 15, you get 7.5. So this would still be the correct answer, being D. Okay. Remember, don't let the distractors throw you off. If this, this question could have asked very different things, could have said, what would you recommend? And it maybe would have said, increase minute ventilation, or it maybe would have said, increase FiO2. Well, if you look up here, you go, wait, we're mildly hypoxemic. But this is not the problem. The CO2 and the acidosis is the problem. You always want to fix your ventilation, your ventilation problems first. Okay, correct the acidosis. And then see if you still have an oxygenation issue or not. You probably won't in this case. Okay, so don't be confused by the distractors. And remember that when you're doing the formula for desired CO2, you can use respiratory rate, tidal volume, or minute ventilation to find the appropriate vent settings you need to get your patient where they want to be. I like doing this at the bedside in the clinic setting. Remember, don't think about clinic when you're taking your TMC, but think about your TMC when you're taking care of your patients at the bedside. A lot of these theories, while, while, while you hear these, these experienced respiratory therapists saying, yeah, nobody uses that formula anymore, you can. If you had this scenario in the patients in the, in the, in, in the hospital, and, the doc, and you were talking to the doc, and the doc said, you know what, just increase the rate to 16. Well, with this formula, you could say, hold on, doc, we don't need the CO2 to be 30 or 30, 31 or 27. We only have to go up to 12 and a half to get us to 40. Now, obviously, 12 and a half is not an option, but we only have to go up by two to get us closer to 40. And that's how this formula is used at the bedside. And this illustration is how it's used on your TMC exam. Best wishes, guys. Good luck to you. I know the break is rounding out. I go back to work on Monday. Can't wait to see all the students back the following Monday. I know all of you are enjoying and having a good break. So just keep up the strong work and best wishes.